I am Bob's, and welcome back to Cryptid Corner, the series where I dive into the depths of specific cryptids, explaining the lore, the legends, and what I think about them. Today, I have my sister back as background commentary. Say hi. Hi. I'm sister. <laughs> uh, for anyone who may not know, cryptids are animals or creatures that are believed to exist mainly by cryptozoologists or people who study or search for unknown, legendary, or extinct animals, but they have no definitive proof of their existence. Today's cryptid is the Suchinoko. Before we get started, I'm not here to try to convince you that this cryptid exists or doesn't exist. You believe what you want to believe. I'm just here to break down the background and the stories of it. Also, I'm sorry if I pronounce anything wrong. She will. Yeah, I will. Uh, today, we travel all the way to Japan, the home of a silly little guy. The Sushinoko is a snake-like cryptid that looks a bit peculiar. Well, actually, it looks a lot like a common snake, except its midsection is bigger than its head and its tail is skinny like a rat's. So it's just fat. Yeah. Okay. So chunky little guy. Chunky snake. Chunky snake. It can grow to be between 30 to 80 centimeters or one to three feet. It allegedly has large plate-like scales, fangs, and is even venomous. It is reported to be black, gray, or a rust color, and some reports say that it has a bright orange belly. It has a grin-like mouth and horns or ears above its eyes, and it apparently squeaks like a mouse when it's not just straight up talking. Do we have a picture of it? Because based on this description, I literally cannot visualize what this thing could look like. <laughs> <laughs> this is what the Suchinoko apparently looks like. So it kind of looks to me like a stingray cobra. Yeah. Like if you mix a king cobra with the stingray, you get whatever the hell this thing is. How does it move? We'll get to that. <laughs> um... And while there are stories of it being able to talk like a person, it apparently is a notorious liar. <laughs> I just saw an image of one and it literally looks like, you know, like those cream filled donuts. Oh my God. With a tail and a snake head. That's literally what it looks like. <laughs> Clip that one. Clip, Clip that, that one. Okay, I'll save that one. The Sushinoko likes to dwell in caves, high mountains, or underwater particularly in forested areas. And while it trundles along like a snake, it also can jump up to three feet as well as do a second jump midair. <laughs> the snake can double jump. And it can fly <laughs> and it can read minds and it turns invisible and it's super fast and it speaks in riddles. <laughs> <laughs> Not only that, but there's also been reports of it t bites its tail and starts to roll <laughs> when it needs to move particularly fast. Which is interesting because there are reports of a snake cryptid in North America called the hoop snake that does that as well. It just kind of like, well, what is, what am I thinking of? Okay, you might have to cut this part out. Okay. Just because I don't exactly remember. Oh no, it's Stitch. It's Stitch from Lilo and Stitch where he puts his feet in his mouth and just starts to roll. <laughs> Yeah, it does that when it needs to move uh, particularly fast. Um, oh, on the mid-air double jump, does it help it? I guess. It needs to like go downhill really fast, okay. so it starts rolling. Um, its diet consists of small mammals, birds, and other reptiles, although it also likes alcohol, according to stories. Bro, same. <laughs> now, the legend of the Suchinoko goes back centuries. Some sources I read claimed reports went back to about 780, but some suggest even further back to the Jomon period, or which, which is about 10,500 to 8,000 BC, because of some pottery found that features chunky snakes. <laughs> but this could just be depictions of an actual snake that we know exists. What's interesting? <laughs> What's interesting, though, is that the Suchinoko is referenced in Japan's oldest history book, saying that a snake yokai, or the Suchinoko, inhabits deep, isolated mountains and forests. This is more than likely the origins of the Suchinoko story at the very least, or perhaps it could be the first report of an undiscovered or uncatalogued creature. Stories and legends of the snake cryptid can be traced back to Western Japan, 
most likely originating where Higashi Shirakawa Village is today. Good for fucking you. <laughs> I've read that so much. Good for fucking you. I looked at that word like, oh, I'm American. <laughs> Higashi Shirakawa claims to have the most reported sightings of the snake and even hosts the annual Suchinoko Festival, which is on May 3rd, and offers a large monetary prize for whoever finds and brings proof of the existence of the snake. The prize is increased each year, and this year the prize money comes to 20 million yen, or almost 200,000 US dollars. <laughs> what? I'm about to make this snake. What? <laughs> now, how often is the Suchinoko spotted? Well, not often. At least not recently. There's been about 20 reported sightings in the 20th century. This is probably due to the creature supposedly living in very remote areas, only seen by people who delve deep into the mountains or forests most often. Although there are reported sightings of people who don't live out in mostly uninhabited areas, although most of them are farmers or people who live by forests and rivers in the countryside. I'm never going to find this thing because no way in hell am I going deep into the forest or nothing like that. Mm -hmm. I am a city girl. No, actually, I'm a suburban mom. <laughs> so here are some specific reports I could find at least a little bit of details on. In June 1969, someone by the name of M. Tokutake caught a live Suchinoko, kept it for a few days, and then ate it. <laughs> Sorry, I was like, I, w I was digesting that. <laughs> See what I did there? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. Um, apparently, it had a double backbone. I assume this means it had two spines or an interlocking spine like a hero shoe does. I don't know what else it could mean, though. Because mm. I looked up what a double backbone is and it was it just, just like... It just means it's very brave. <laughs> okay. Uh, in June of 1994, Kazuaki Noda allegedly spotted a huge snake with a body that looked like a beer bottle and a head shaped like a tortoise's. I feel like these people are just finding snakes that just ate. Have you ever seen a snake that just ate? Mm -hmm. Its stomach is huge. It's like all wide. And like if they have to make a quick escape, they'll spit up what they just ate to take off. You're just finding a fat snake. Like <laughs> You just uh, found them after lunch is what you found. On May 8th of 2000, farmer Sugi Tanaka spotted two Suchinoko with tails like rats. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and in June of 2000, Mitsuko Arima spotted a snake swimming in a nearby river, the most notable feature of which was its large bulging eyes that seemed to stick out of the water. Also in 2000, a Suchinoko skeleton was reportedly found and given to a museum. But these bones were determined to be a malformed grass snake. <laughs> This is what I'm saying. You're just finding snakes. <laughs> I say, I mention this because a lot of the sources I read would talk about the snake skeleton being found and then they would not talk about it being determined to be just a regular snake. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. Now, let's break down some things and possibly debunk them. Earlier, I mentioned how some people believe evidence of the Suchinoko may have existed since the first civilizations of Japan because some pottery featuring chunky snakes were found. <clears throat> I want a chunky snake. <laughs> I, I, want I really snake. want a little chunky snake. So it's more common to believe that those snakes are actually depicting the mamushi, which is a Japanese pit viper, which uh, means they are, these people are believed to be snake worshippers still, mm -hmm. but it's not believed to be the Suchinoko. But what else could all these alleged sightings potentially be? Well, the most obvious seems to be literally just a common snake that has just eaten. What did I say? <laughs> As snakes do bulge after they eat. Same. So I looked up common snakes in Japan because I wanted to compare descriptions and see which would be most easily mistaken for the Suchinoko. This included taking account of color, size, and habitat. The two most obvious seem to be the already mentioned Mamushi or the Oriental Odd Tooth Snake. That's rude. That's its scientific name. Oh, why? <laughs> well, it's scientific. That's its common name. Um, ooh, maybe it has weird teeth. Let's look it up. Yeah, that's mean. What's wrong with its teeth? I don't know. That's a frog. Um, I don't see teeth. 
Right, it's not even showing his teeth. That's so rude. You just named it an odd tooth. What is, maybe. It, no, it, it bit just... the scientist that found it. Fuck the snake in its teeth. <laughs> yeah. Fuck your odd teeth. Fuck your odd teeth. So both match general color, size, and habitat, although only the mamushi is venomous. The only problem with this theory is that neither of these snakes have red or orange undersides, which is a common trait featured in reports. In fact, there aren't any snakes native to Japan with orange bellies. Another possible Tsuchinoko imposter is the blue tongue skink, which is another chunky little reptile that is a popular pet in Japan. Although they weren't legal to own as pets until the 70s, this still does line up with the Tsuchinoko boom that happened at the same time, which means the two could be linked. See, there you, there you go. That's exactly what we're talking about. This thing just ate, and that's what people see. Now, what do I think? Is it possible that the Suchinoko is real? Wait, wait. What? Let's redo that one. Wait, I have a question. <laughs> What's your question? What do you think, Bobs? <laughs> I think it is totally possible that the Suchinoko is real. Because there is enough uninhabited and remote wilderness in Japan that an undiscovered species of snake could be living out there. Because we discover new species every day. True. All that it comes down to for me is that the Tsuchinoko is a funny looking little guy with a rich history and a rich cultural impact. And if I'm ever able to, I will definitely find my way to the annual Tsuchinoko festival. Oh, how fun. I think that was a very great knowledge that you just imparted on us. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> but what do you think? Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe for more. Do you want to see me delve into the lore of a specific cryptid? Let me know in the comments below. Bye! <laughs> I hope you have a good rest of your day, drink lots of water, eat good food, and I will see you in the next one. Bye! Bye! <laughs>